Matthew chapter number 7. I want, I want to read verse 21 through 27. So it says, this is Matthew's writing. He's, he's, he's giving a whole list of descriptions. He starts off talking about judgment, how not to judge. And then he goes down and tells us about the roads to get to God. He tells us there's only one. And after he tells us about the roads to get to God, he, he then starts telling us about how to pray. This is all one chapter. And then he then proceeds after he tells us about how to judge and how we judge, he then tells us about the golden rule. Do unto others as you want, basically done unto you. And then he then moves into this whole conversation about trees. He gives this analogy about trees bearing different types of fruit. And then he talks about some trees bear good fruit, some trees bear bad fruit, and you can identify a tree by what it produces. And then he goes into this unique discussion where he says, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. And this is again still Keith, a part of this whole doctrine of work that doing the will of the Father is whatever God called you to do. And, and I don't know what he called you to do, but he called you to do something. And over the next few weeks, we will talk about how what God has called you to do still ties into following God, loving people, and changing the city. And he, he says, on, on Judgment Day, many will, will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, we cast out demons in your name, perform many miracles in your name, but I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the torrents beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on the bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and does not obey it is foolish. It's like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings, for he taught the real authority quite like any other teacher or religious leader of that time. Uh, one of the most offensive things to tell somebody is to go to hell. Um, I will not tell you to touch your neighbor and tell them go to hell. I will not ask you to put on the screen, go to hell. Upon giving this title, uh, go to hell, a few of my preaching colleagues said, Pastor D, are you okay because you're cussing? I said, I'm not cussing. I said, that's actually what God will tell people who don't know him, go to hell. I want you to hear the sermon out before you draw your conclusion. I know Pastor Grandpa Outing said, the old saints are probably turning over in their grave when they saw the sermon title. And I know when some of you got the text message and saw the message, go to hell, you were like, I don't know if my children can listen to that. But I believe we are building massive houses of worship which are becoming just self-help centers, positive thinking centers, life coaching centers, preparing everyone for this life without highlighting the life thereafter. We live in such a politically correct culture and a cancel culture that opposes the idea that a soul could actually miss heaven. I believe in the start of 2021, we need to have a God view on what our goals and destiny should look like. 
I honestly would much rather a person tell me to go to hell than God himself respond to me to go to hell. <laughs> um, the content in the context of this particular text is beautiful. When I was my son DJ's age, 12, I was a youth pastor or whatever you want to call it. And this was actually my only sermon I usually preached. It was this sermon that I would utilize. It didn't matter where it was, I'd always land on this particular narrative. And if I was in those times, um, you can put my original um, slide that I sent, that you created for me, uh, Kenise. Um, I, I, I um, in, my, in my younger days of preaching, I would have them turn all the lights off and I would just preach to you in the dark. But because of online streaming and people needing to be able to see, y'all like my thing back there? That guy's kind of cool, right? Uh, so, so I want to kind of highlight this because um, a lot of what we're building won't stand the fire. Right? A, a lot of us are using God in culture as a term that we use to get what we want or the ability to flex behind God. And so in this particular text, this is the craziest text because these, think about it, these guys are standing or girls are standing in line and they are talking amongst themselves. Can I modernize and contemporize this text for those that are reading it? I can imagine there's a long line of people waiting to meet the master. And they're all in this line looking at each other saying, man, I can't wait to talk to him. I've been worshiping him all these years. Man, I, I done, I done made a lot of money. I have given him all the glory. I done had all these goals in 2021. I thank them because I crossed over 2020 and I've been praising them ever since. And then, oh man, I, I, man, I can't wait to talk to him too, man. I, I gotta tell you, man, I, I done prophesied in his name. For real? Yeah, man, I tell you, it was crazy, it was crazy. What about you? Man, I, I built an amazing business. And this business, man, it had a lot of followers online, bro. It had so many people loving what I was doing. I gave these motivational messages every morning on God. No cap. People loved it. And they, they just find it. They're like, man, wow, that's amazing. I can't wait to see what he says. And, and they all, man, you dressed up kind of nice. Yeah, the Lord blessed me. I, I, you know, these red bottoms I have, the Lord gave it to me. And I give him all the glory for it. Amen. Praise Jesus. And, I, I, man, I started a new business this year. What time? I started a tax business and, and, I, and I bless people I look out for them, I take care of them and my, my tax entrepreneurial venture man God is blessed and they just sitting there having this conversation and then it's like okay well it's my turn to talk to them and he, they go up and they're like hey what's up he says hey he says, before you talk God you know I've been talking to you quite a bit I prayed to you a couple times, even devoted to starting my devotions to you. And, you know, every year I do the 21 day prayer with the church, like the religious people. We do it 21 days. We, 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 for 21 days, we say no social media, no sweets, and, and we're going to eat smoothies. We don't pray, but we just call it a 21 day consecration, right? And then after these 21 days in March, we still live like hell because the 21 days weren't really devoted to God. They were just religious routines that we do to check off the box to say we did holiness at the top of the year and and, and but, but God but, but before we continue this dialogue um, I want to tell you about all the wonderful things I did I gave people jobs I, I worked at a job and I, I, I told everybody about this new movie uh, I told man and, and God's listening to him and he's like yeah I just I just got a few questions like let me just ask you a few questions okay yeah God for sure for sure how many people did you lead to me? No, 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 no. No, you messed up. Not how many people did you lead to your church? No, but God, you're, you're asking some tough questions because, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't, I mean, I didn't know the Bible like that. I, I knew it. 
I knew it, but I didn't know the Bible. God's like, but I want to ask you a question. You don't know movies, but you tell people about them. Well, no. Well, hold up, God. Um, um, okay, this conversation ain't going the way I thought. But God, let me ask, hold on, before you, before you throw all this shade in my direction, God, um, you don't realize I, 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 I did a lot of things in your name. And the crazy thing about this text is this. God never disputed that they didn't do it in his name. If you read the text carefully, these individuals were convinced they had a relationship with someone who never had a relationship with them. Y'all ain't talking to me today. So it is possible to be convinced internally that you have a relationship with a God that never had a relationship with you. This, this is crazy. That's like being married and realizing that you married somebody that never ever loved you. And you find out in this conversation that we never really had a relationship. You always thought we were in it together, but I never was in it. And I wonder how many of us in our culture are worshiping God and God is on his Instagram because he doesn't know us. God doesn't have Instagram, but you get the point, right? No, because think about it. When we grew up, we grew up hearing messages that adjusted our soul. So now we're all into, I need to get my mental health right. I need to get this energy right that's around me. I need to make sure that I, I have enough downtime for my, but God's like, yeah, but where, where your soul at? Because you, I don't really know you. Like, I, I don't want you, and, 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 and it doesn't matter how much church we do. We used to have church where there was revival, and revival was all about, they just preaching to you about going to hell. But now revival is all about you becoming more of what God wants you to become at the expense of your relationship with him. God is more concerned. God would rather you lose in this life and win in his kingdom than you win in this life and lose him. I am convinced that sometimes God does not answer our prayers, not because God is unjust, but because God knows we don't have the right foundation that if we get what we're asking him for, we will lose him in the process of getting what we're asking for. So maybe, 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 I know it's not preached, but maybe God allows what you're going through to remain so that you can remain with him. Because eternity is a lot longer than time. Time ends at a certain sequence, but eternity is forever. So God's like, no, I'd rather you have this issue. I'd rather you be single for a longer period of time and keep you near me than let you get what you want and walk away from it. I'd rather let you stay in a job you don't really love or don't really care about, but it will make you get up, put your clothes on on a Sunday morning when it's about to rain and say, I got to go to the house of God. I'd rather not get you everything that you've been asking for because I like your press when you don't get what I give you so here it is these gentlemen I want to give you three things and I'm gonna go home he says um, I, I didn't he didn't he didn't say like we used to know each other he said I never knew you you know how crazy that is to call someone to use their name and then you walk up to them and they say, bro, I never knew you. The disappointment you must have to realize that you've been building a relationship with an illusion. That, that you've been building this relationship with an illusion. And God's like, no, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know you. Like, I, I tried to know you. But when I wanted to get intimate with you, you wanted no involvement. So they had involvement with no intimacy. So, so it is possible to be involved with God, but never intimate with God. 
It is possible to be in God's house, but never be with God. Because there's a lot of people who go to God's house, but they never worship in God's house. They get involved, but they don't get intimate. They see God moving, but that ain't my song. They see God moving, but that ain't my type of thing. That ain't my style. That, and God's like, no, I wanted to get intimate with you, but every time I wanted to get intimate with you, you didn't want to get involved with me. So I just allowed you to settle for the relationship you thought you had. Number two, you had confession with no conversion. You had confession with no conversion. All your goals were about you. When you, read, <laughs> when you read at the core of everything you're trying to get to, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. You use my name to make it sound, to, you use my name to sanitize your holiness. But it has nothing to do with me. You had confession without conversion. Number three, let me stop there. Confession without conversion. You were devoted to using my name as long as it got you where you needed to go. But number three, because y'all getting real quiet. It says this. You had demonstration without devotion. So here's the crazy thing. I, this is the craziest part. I would show up because you called me. But I didn't show up because of you. I showed up be, in spite of you. The problem was you confused me showing up with my approval of you. Okay, let me, let me, let me break it down. You could have had a winning season and God not be part of your wins. But you misinterpreted the wins as God being with you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, so you thought because you hit the rock and water came out, you thought that I was with you. In actuality, I really wasn't with you. I used you in spite of you. And there are a lot of us in this room, if we are not careful, we will build a golden calf and call it God. and try to sanitize it by putting God's name on it. So here it is. So, so let me say it this way. In my line of work, you get to a certain place and people want you to keep going to the next space. Because this, this, it's a word everybody uses. We got to go to the next level. We got to go to the next level. Sometimes the next level is so they can get their golden calf worshipped. You got to be careful because here's the reality. You may get God at this level and lose him going to your next level. So, so you can get God on one level and then lose him on your next level. It's like, it's like the poor person that prays, that prays really, really hard because they don't have enough. And then they, they start getting stuff, and then all of a sudden their worship, their praise, their, their exuberance towards God changes because they've moved up in an in a economic status or an economic category. The greatest danger to the local church, Western church, is not that God is not able, is not that God is not capable. The greatest danger to the Western church is that God allowed them to win without him, and they think that God endorsed them because they're winning. Some of us can win because of our willpower. Some of us can win because of our charisma. Some of us can win because our, tena our tenacity. But the reality of the question is, has, has the life that I've built, is God even in it? Verse number 24, it says, Nate, is that your dad? Oh, okay, great. Hey, friend Nate. Uh, so here it is. Um, so anyway, um, here's what it is. Jesus starts saying this. He says, um, there are people who build houses but the only way the house stands is based on what it's built on 
So we both have a house. The only difference between my house and your house is what it's built on. And even though it looks the same, and that is the deception of today, is that because we see people with houses, we assume it's the same type of house. And just because we both got the house doesn't mean that we're built on the same thing. I want to know how many dinner parties or dinner tables you sat at that Satan was at, but you assumed that they were God because they sanitized their language with God. And God says, no, I want you to understand something. Just because we both have a house doesn't mean our houses are built the same. And God is going to send some of us into darkness. But here's the thing, when God sends you into darkness, you can't stay in darkness. And some of you have been in darkness for a long time. And I know everybody stands over everybody's body and tells them that you're going to heaven, but the worst thing in the world is to stand before God and he tell you, I ain't never know you. You done made all that money playing, and I ain't never know you. I was more with you when you were poor. Oh, no, you, 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 you blew up and you forgot me. You got that house and then you stopped praying to me. Your commitment decreased when I increased you. Because the reality is, is that when God increases you, that should be the level of your increase. I don't worship him because I got, no, no, the more God does, the more exuberant you should be, the more excited you should be. No, come on church, I don't care how much money you got, I don't care how big of a car you got, I don't care how big of a house you got, I don't care how big your backyard is, the larger you get, the more you should stop and say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. No, I'm not just saying that as a cliche I'm saying that so my soul won't forget it is the Lord who's done these great things and not me of myself and so here he says he says this he says when they built their houses he says what what tests the the, the strength of what you build is the storm rains this is, a, this is a principle that's very true. It says, you can test the quality of a relationship by the winds that come and if it stands. Because if it's built on the right foundation, it, will, it may waver, it may bend, it may break, but it will recover because of the foundation. And a lot of you have built relationships on clay. That's why every year you got to start cutting people off because you got all these clay relationships. You don't have any rock relationships. And so here it is, here it is what he says. He says, well, the rains came and they were torrential rains. They weren't ordinary rains. They put the building to test and when the rivers rose, the rivers are to be understood, the mountain torrents or winter torrents, which arises because of the heavy rain, the house couldn't stand because it didn't have the right foundation. And I want to admonish all of us this year, pre-PD to people, like whatever you're building on, make sure it's on the rock and not on clay. All these, go man, I, I, want to, I want to get this, I want to get that. And don't lose your pursuit to do whatever God has called you to do. But in the process of your pursuit, don't lose him because it's a hard thing to stand in eternity and look God in the face. And God say, listen, I never knew you. Like the time that I cried in front of you, he's like, yeah, you did, but it wasn't to me. It was to your God that you created. All of us, if we're not careful, we can have idols that we worship more than God. I don't know about you, but 2020 showed us a lot of our idols came down. 
A lot of things that we had put up and we don't even recognize because the children in the Old Testament, they didn't realize they were building these idols. They just all of a sudden had these idols and God was like, yo, I'm a jealous God. I don't like what you built because what you built is taking the place of me and you. And today we're not building diamond earrings. We're not building golden caps. We're building businesses. We're building bags. We're building hobbies. We're building social media influences. These are our golden calves. And if you're not careful, they'll replace what's important. And I'll, I'll tell you mine so you, can, so you feel good about yourself. Like I made a commitment this year. My goal, one of my goals, is I'm, I'm putting this down for at least an hour a day. Because you don't realize this could become an idol. Like God's like, yeah, I, dude, I was trying to get a hold of you, but you were too busy scrolling. Like, no, I was, I was literally trying to call you, but you were so busy. You were so busy, your schedule never included me. I tried to text you, but you were too busy to respond. I tried to send friends to tell you stuff, but you were too busy to respond. I try to preach a message to you the first Sunday of the year, but you logged off because you didn't like how it messed up your soul. As we project our future, whatever we do, make sure you're building it on the rock. Whatever career you're building, don't build it on sand. If you're in the church house, don't use God's name to build your personal career. Everybody's on, I got to go to the next level. And most of the levels don't include God. They include people. If you suck up to people as much as you would suck up to God, you'd go really far in life. You on everybody's page, tagging them on every single thing you could. God's like, why are you sucking up to them and they ain't wake you up this morning? Why are you trying to market? To, if you would market to me, I would blow you up. If you would market to me, I would expose you to places you've never seen before. And God's like, it is possible to have involvement without intimacy. It is possible to have demonstration without devotion. And it is possible to have confession without conversion. I know I'm going to close with this at a funeral, so if you've heard me say it at a funeral, just ignore it. I'll probably say it at your funeral. Life is like Walmart. It really is. It truly is. At Walmart, it's kind of cool. I don't know which Walmart y'all go to. <laughs> But one time, listen, okay, let me just confess, because confession is good for the soul. Somebody asked me, have I ever went to the club before? My answer was no. But then I realized I lied. I have been to the club before. I went to the Walmart on Kirkman. <laughs> I tell you, I, I, was, I was like, what is, this is just like the club at after nine o'clock. But anyway, life is like Walmart. So, <laughs> man, you see everything there. So, so so yeah, so you can go to Walmart and um, man, you could actually take a carriage. You probably take two. No one's really gonna say anything to you. The old person at the front really ain't gonna judge you at, at first. You can go to Walmart and go buy some groceries. You go to the right, that's the grocery section. There's a frozen food section. You got pizza there grab some pizza. Then there's the ice cream section. If you've never had Trace Leche's ice cream, you're missing out on life. It's, it's amazing. And then you can grab that. There's also cheesecake ice cream. It's really, really good. You should try that too. They even have ice cream that's in alcohol form, like spirits. I don't do that. Gene does all the time. But so they have, they have those ice creams and you can grab those. And, and, and if once you leave the ice cream, then you can go get cereal. 
because you can't end your night without having some good cereal. Kids miss out on the beauty of life where you would just end your life with Fruit Loops, Lucky Charms, Apple Jacks, come on church, Frosted Flakes. God was, God was in all those. Fruit Loops, Captain Jacks. And then once you leave the cereal aisle, you may go to the vegetable aisle and get some greens. And then for us who want to be real healthy, you know, you get those health juices. Yeah, you can pick up all those natural juices. And some of us need to go get water. So, you know, some of us drink regular water. Some of us have moved up in life and drink that disgusting water called Perrier. Perrier. <laughs> Gross. Um, it's, uh, I went to a restaurant with a group and uh, they said, uh, do you want regular water? I said, yeah, regular water's fine. But then I saw everybody at the table didn't order regular water. So I, you know, you want to fit in with the table because this is my first time at this table. I saw everybody say, I want Perrier. I was like, oh, wow, I've never heard of Perrier before. Because when they came to me, they're like, tap water? I was like, yeah, it's cool with me, play if tap water's good. But everybody's like, no, I want Perrier. I want, no, I want bottled water. I drank the Perrier, and it was gross. <laughs> but um, anyway, so after you get water, you know, you can go down the hair aisle and get some hair, whatever you need. No, I'm not talking, see, that's the problem with y'all. I weren't talking about hair like this. This is, this is, this is why we're in bondage right now. Hair is, is terrible. I was talking about hair products. Like you go down, they have one little section for African stuff you can find. If you slightly twitch your eye, you can see it. And then you get some shampoos and your things like that. And then you kind of move on and you, you might want to go to the electronic section. Now your cart's getting big and bigger and bigger. And you get the electronics, you get a hoverboard, get yourself a little iPhone case. You know, you want to get yourself, if you have uh, the other device, um, I don't know. But <laughs> you can get a cell phone there too, I found out. I didn't know that. You can get $45 a month to just talk wireless, whatever. Do that too. Then you can get a TV, because, you know, life isn't complete without a good TV. But, but after you get all that stuff together, here's the thing about it. There are cameras watching you whatever you do. They may never tell you what you're doing, maybe right or wrong, but they see everything you do. I don't know if you've ever done this, but have you ever opened a pack of candy and just ate a piece of candy? and then put it back because you realize you ain't like it. No. All right, so anyway, this was when I was a kid. Um, so you can't do that stuff now. You'll be for the state attorney, and now all of a sudden you see her stealing a piece of candy. Like, Listen, I prayed for you, so you need to give me a lighter sentence, okay? Um, so you, once you get to the... Once you get to the register, once they start scanning all that stuff, like you gotta pay for it. Like it was cool, whatever you did, like he was cool with it. Nobody stopped you. Nobody told you like this is a little bit much. You may have some people that looked at you a little different when they walked by. But before you get to the, before you leave the store, you got to pay for all that stuff you did. The question that has to be posed is do you have enough to pay for all the transactions that you've acquired? And I know that if we stand before God, the worst thing in the world is to stand before him and say, I don't have enough because I forgot my wallet. The person behind you ain't going to pay for your stuff. You got to pay for it. 
The preacher ain't paying for it. The deacons ain't paying for it. What they said ain't paying for it. The reason why you don't have the money, he will tell you in the worst words you can ever hear in your life, go to hell. Now, this is quite dramatic, but it's true. I don't like roller coasters, but I try to get my kids to go on them. There's a thing called on iDrive. It, my wife was doing a sibling dinner, and so I had the kids, so I was trying to convince DJ to go on this roller coaster on iDrive. It's, it's like, I forgot what it's called. It's called a spring, or what is it called? The slingshot. It's, it was $25 as a good father. I went there to pay for him to go because I wanted to have him experience it for me. So he could share with me how it was. So I took him, I parked, I said, son, you want to do it? He said, no. I said, you do want to do it. You just don't know you don't want to do it. So he says, no. So I tried to get his sister, I said, you know you two should do it together because this would be great. It was just personal joy to see them just get shot up in the air and see how they'd respond because I don't do roller coasters. And I'll tell you why I don't do it and I'm done. As a boy, I came to Disney. My pastor at the time was a pastor in Boston. The wife went to Disney. She was older, Pastor David P. And um, we were getting on, and I loved roller coasters as a kid. And DJ, kind of like me, he likes, I don't know what happened that day, but he just didn't want to do it. But we're going to try again, because that wasn't the will of God. So anyway, I, I was in line for Space Mountain. Kids, ask your parents to take you to Disney. We were in line for Space Mountain. And the woman of God prayed, no lie, I promise. The woman of God prayed. She said, Lord, if I'm not to get on this ride, give me a sign. I was the sign. I ended up throwing up on the spot, getting a fever out of nowhere. And they had to rush and take me home. I was sick as a dog. I'll never forget how sick I was going on the roller coaster. And I came home, my mom was like, I don't know what happened. What, did you eat something? I said, no, I was fine. And, then I, and the pastor's wife said, I know what happened. I prayed that God, if you don't want me to go, give me a sign. I was the sign. Ever since then, I don't do any roller coasters, anything that takes you up, takes you down. I don't, I don't do it. I live through my kids and my wife. My wife loves roller coasters. She, she'll do anything, any roller coaster. Now she starts saying because she had children, she can't go on roller coasters. But I want to see her do the slingshot. I, I think that would be good. Wouldn't y'all love to see her do the slingshot? I'd love to see Lady Karen do the slingshot. Amen. I, people pass out on that thing. My point to all of that was this. Imagine getting thrown up in the air and then free falling down. Now hell is not just fire, but it says that hell is actually a bottomless pit. So that means you're on a forever, never ending roller coaster that just keeps dropping. If the scriptures are true, that means that hell is literally this. You st <laughs> it's funny, but it's not. You stand before God, and God's like, yeah, I didn't know you. Go to hell. And he throws you into the lake of fire, which is a never-ending fall. So if you don't like the sling, can you imagine being thrown and falling forever? And every time you're falling, all you can remember is the sermon devotion without demonstration confession without conversion intimacy without invol involvement without intimacy 
So as I close, I want to challenge all of us to build this year on the rock. Goals will be there. You need them. But build on the rock. Pastor, people, build on the rock. Father, I have communicated the first Sunday of the year what you asked me to. As unpopular as it may be, we all need it. We all need to hear it. We cannot preach some of your word and not all of it. Even if we don't like it, we must taste it. So Holy Spirit, help my brother and my sister. Find you and keep you. So as we take communion in this moment, God, this is a moment where we can honor you for your death, your burial, and resurrection. But before we do, God, if there's any person that's in this place or even watching online and saying like, I, yo, for real? I have built my whole life on sand. Or maybe I grew up and I just, I, man, I just, I just, just drifted. And I want to recommit, reconnect my faith, my heart to God. I want you in this moment to text the word if you're online or even in the sacred sanctuary, you can text the word Jesus to 407-449-8884, 407-449-8884. You text the word Jesus to that, and we will follow up with you. But all of us collectively, I want us to pray and invite God into our hearts to begin the year with Jesus as Lord of our hearts and our souls. Confession doesn't make one saved without the transformation of your heart. And only Jesus can do that. But it does start with confession. Romans is pretty clear, like, we have to confess with our heart that Jesus Christ died for the died for our sins, resurrected on the third day, and secured our salvation. So let's start the year off fresh, recommitting, rededicating our life to God's purpose and God's plan. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I come to you, a sinner in need of grace. Today, I give you my heart. I give it to you again. Work in me. Work through me. Your plan, your purpose. Father, I believe my sins put Jesus on the cross. He died for me, resurrected on the third day to secure my salvation. Holy Spirit, help me to live for you in a world filled with other gods. Help me to surrender my life to you, that you will be pleased and tell me, well done.